every reason to say it was implausible, unbelievable, impossible. But alas, we now understand we were wrong. For when young Theodora stumbled upon it among the smoldering fuselage in Dead Horse, Alaska, it would forever alter the course of her world and our world. Even though it had long slumbered in the womb of the deep since the dawn of mankind, to us, it is a novel despair. Undiscovered until we brought our drills to Prudhoe Bay. Once our machines were ignited, they hummed with a sound like a purr, and the drilling grew into a growl. Now, whether by accident or by fate, they chanted this sleeping titan's name, and it awoke. We knew not what we did.
right and shall be whole. Despair and dread, oh my betrothed. He still lives in a memory of us. Holiday, a getaway full of golden times and dry.
For three years after, Theodora held her ground. But a soul that is trammeled cannot be sustained. Under the pressure, she became resolute. She was going to claw her way out, even if it was to be her own grave.
to sleep, perchance to dream, for in that sleep of death what dreams may come. But there was no death for Thea and Cal, though they slept nigh one hundred years. A sleep to heal the heartache and the thousand natural shocks. None such rest would grace the world outside. In just a few decades, it was dragged eons from the beauty of their chambers. Cities slumped like dusty graveyards while farms and forests were transformed into a uniform buzzing sprawl, an equidistant gray grid. For in this world, brash and fragile personas alike were an epidemic unto themselves. Proximity the pathology for the disease, for sickness was no longer a foreign agent, their souls its breeding ground. Their consolation? the dreariest shadow of Eden to tend. In 2077, with the World Council adjourned, a solution was co-signed by its most powerful minds. They claimed to have found in code the children of perfected reason. In metal frames, the guides to utopia to each citizen their own as a gift, a multiplicity of stars with a singular will. The ushers, the cleansers, the cure, the saints. It was at this moment that Thea and Cal awoke.
to stay and fight The two of us are not quite fortified With the battle of our lives on the horizon Near fights when none the wiser I can testify We won't survive For are we scarecrows or sentinels Standing strong or foam and nail down to a pole? Will we ever grow a proper sense of panic In a world so inorganic Or do you suppose we're straw-filled clothes? For the way we were Was the way we learned to live We couldn't give the things We never had to give But when we fall we might ascend And begin
those bloody clothes and resounding screams Then I beheld a great eagle alight On a mountain aloft on a storm in the night Lightning would strike as his wings would expand
after defeating the terror of the saints, our heroes have once again returned to their slumber. Cal's sleep was riddled with thrills and nightmares alike. His blistered feet gnawed at his restfulness as he rehearsed the memory of his wounds. His dreams were a reflection of the real world outside, which had begun a descent into darkness. Its oceans rose to half the height of the tallest mountain peaks. In these days, the foremost people still living sought refuge in the Institute atop Denali. Their collective skills had granted them an unnatural length to their lives. But in granting their wish, they inadvertently bargained away their fertility, their future. Still, they were not without a plan. The key to their survival would take an incredible length of time to bear its fruit. Time that would require great isolation and deprivation. The bread and circus for the journeys must be perfected. The final experiments began. Their communion systematically tweaked to long stave off the inevitable madness until their fruitfulness could be restored. But Theodora had different dreams altogether, for they were anchored above this drowning world. Her hopes grew eyes. With them she saw a garden in the city, and the garden was the city, and the city was the whole world. For her, the morning they finally awoke came all too soon.
You'll never 
the heir of the grand matrons. If bound together the minds of the last ones alive, would finally their divinity arise? But when united in thought, they uncovered the cause to draw all humanity to a halt. There was no solution and no substitution. It was always to be a we or a none. Cal could only see the stars in the sky. No land, no sea. However, the adorer could still see all three. So she laid out her case for the space in between. She could be 